I'm starting with you, David, because if this were law and order, which I love so much, if this were law and order, uh, the cops would start looking at this, they'd look at the motive, they'd look at all sorts of things, and then they'd see this guy's got a bit of a rap sheet, so they'd go to somebody who knew him before, right, when before he was president. We know all this stuff from 2016. You know him from before. So if people came to you and said, hey, this guy who you know, who you've written about, had all this stuff in his, uh, in his, at his place, what do you make of it? What would you have said? Well, Tom, Donald fits perfectly the law and order model of the mobster who, along with his family, has never been caught because Donald's very good at uh, running out the clock, ratting out other people, and complicating uh, the case. Um, I think, however, we're at the stage where the prosecutors have to decide how they're going to shape the case. Uh, you, you don't want to bring a kitchen sink case. You want to bring the case you can win. And that's the real challenge now is what of the many different crimes or collections of crimes that you could hit Donald Trump with are you going to want to bring because that's the case you know you can win? Okay, Glenn Kirshner, here's the problem. The case you can win is the obvious case. It's the case that these documents shouldn't have been there. In my humble opinion as a non-lawyer but avid law and order viewer, that's not the case I'm interested in. I'm not interested in the guy who took documents that weren't supposed to be at his house that are supposed to be at the National Archives. I'm, I'm fundamentally disinterested in that. I'm really interested in why he took them and what happened with those documents and the information therein. Yeah, Ali, and the law and order theme is so apropos. Um, and, and it's not just about bringing the case we can win. And I, and I think there are any number of cases to be brought against Donald Trump, whether it's, you know, mishandling classified information and or inciting an insurrection. But I also think at this moment, what we need to do is assess the potential damage to our national security that might be part and parcel of what Donald Trump did. You know, when I tried cases for 30 years, I was a simple, straightforward prosecutor. And when I saw the evidence reported, when I saw the inventory unsealed, and I saw 43 classified folders that used to contain classified documents that were empty and that were in Donald Trump's office, I was reminded of what I told every single jury. I said, ladies and gentlemen, you don't check your common sense at the door, at the door when you're selected as a juror. You bring it into the courtroom, into the jury box, and most importantly, into the deliberation room. Is there anybody who thinks that when Donald Trump was packing up the White House or having others pack it up for him, he said, you know what I'm going to need you to do? I have 43 empty folders over there that used to contain classified documents. I'm going to want you to pack those up, deliver them to my private office at Mar-a-Lago and put them in my desk drawers. I would suggest that offends our common sense. We now know that there's a potential security threat as a result of whatever he did with these documents. That has to be assessed in real time. Joyce Vance, uh, let's talk about the defense, right? For a moment, we're going to put aside the fact that this is a crime story, and we're going to go back to it being a little bit of a political story, because Donald Trump is a political figure who, by the way, as president, had the privilege, when he was president, of declassifying documents. And people in Trump world have floated that, that perhaps he declassified those documents. Bill Barr, uh, the former attorney general of the United States, uh, was on Fox today, and he said this about that. Let's listen. What people are missing is that all the other documents taken, even if they claim to be executive privilege, either belong to the government because they're government records, even if they're classified, even if they're uh, subject to executive privilege, they still belong to the government and go to the archives. If, in fact, he sort of stood over uh, scores of boxes, not really knowing what was in them, and said, I hereby declassify everything in here, that would be such an abuse. Uh, and uh, that uh, and su shows such recklessness that it's almost worse than taking the documents. Putting aside the recklessness, because I don't buy it, Joyce. I don't buy that that Trump was reckless. And he, I mean, you saw the photos of these things. You can't accidentally pick up files that are so clearly demarcated as top secret and secret uh, SCI. How, how does that defense stand up? If you're prosecuting this case, the I just declassified them. Does that work? Well, it doesn't work at all, and it doesn't work for a number of reasons. First off is even the former attorney general has conceded that's just not how declassification works. The whole point of classified documents 
is that they protect secrets. Even for declassification by a president, you have to go through a procedure. The documents have to bear markings showing that they're no longer classified. And none of this happened here. Really, this I waved my magic wand and declassified everything defense was just a prime example of Trump throwing spaghetti up against the wall and hoping that something would stick in the court of public opinion and help him get out of trouble. It's nothing more than that.